Imagine this. A flickering fire casts shadows on the jagged walls of a cave in southern China. 300,000 years ago, a group of hominins huddles together, their faces a strange blend of ancient and familiar. Their teeth gleam in the firelight, some small and modern, others thick and rugged like those of a long-lost ancestor. These are the people of Huangdong, and they carry a secret that could rewrite the story of humanity. Did our ancestors mingle with one of the most enduring hominins of all time, Homo erectus? Buckle up, because we're diving deep into a prehistoric mystery that's as thrilling as it is groundbreaking. Picture a world of endless savannas, dense jungles, and towering volcanoes. It's the middle Pleistocene, a time when Homo erectus ruled as one of the most successful hominins ever. These resilient beings spread from Africa to Asia nearly two million years ago, adapting to scorching deserts and chilly mountains. They were the ultimate survivors, crafting stone tools, taming fire, and possibly even stitching hides into primitive clothing. In China, sites like Jokudian, home of the famous Peking man, reveal their ingenuity, wooden spears, scraped hides, and even mysterious drilled objects. But were they just a stepping stone to us or something more? The traditional story says Homo erectus vanished, replaced by modern humans sweeping out of Africa. But what if they didn't just disappear? What if their legacy lives on in our bones, our teeth, our very DNA? The Huangdong fossils unearthed in Southern China are shaking up this narrative. These remains from at least 16 individuals who lived 275,000 to 331,000 years ago don't fit the mold of either Homo erectus or Homo sapiens. Their teeth are a puzzle, small molars like ours, but roots as robust as those of their ancient kin. Their skulls blend modern faces with archaic jaws. This isn't just a fossil find, it's a clue to a prehistoric soap opera of interbreeding and survival. The idea that Homo erectus might have mingled with our ancestors is more than a scientific curiosity. It's a window into our shared past. It challenges the outdated notion of a tidy human family tree. Instead, it's a tangled web of connections where different hominins met, mixed, and shaped each other. Think of it like a prehistoric melting pot where ideas, genes, and cultures blended in ways we're only beginning to understand. This makes me wonder, how much of Homo erectus's resilience, their knack for survival, still echoes in us today? Let's zoom into the Huangdong site discovered in 2006. Picture archaeologists brushing away centuries of dirt to reveal teeth, jaws, and a near-complete skull labeled HLD6, belonging to a young male, barely a teenager. His face looks eerily modern, almost like one of us, but his jaw and cranial vault tell a different story. Hints of Homo erectus linger in their structure. The teeth are the real showstopper, 21 of them, with modern-sized molars but thick archaic roots. This mix isn't random. It screams hybridity, a population born from the union of Homo erectus and something closer to modern humans. Why is this so exciting? Because it suggests Asia was a hotspot of evolutionary drama. Around 300,000 years ago, Homo erectus was still kicking in places like Java, surviving until at least 108,000 years ago. Modern humans or their close relatives showed up in nearby Sumatra by 73,000 years ago. That's a massive overlap. Plenty of time for these groups to meet, mingle, and maybe more. The Huangdong fossils could be the smoking gun, physical proof of gene flow between these ancient populations. I can't help but imagine the scene. A band of Homo erectus, rugged and resourceful, encounters a group of early modern humans by a riverbank. Maybe they traded tools, shared a meal, or even fell in love. The fossils don't tell us the emotions, 
but they hint at the outcome. Offspring who carried traits from both worlds. This isn't just about biology, it's about connection. These hominins weren't isolated tribes. They were part of a vibrant, interconnected world. It makes you wonder, what stories, songs, or skills did they share? Asia's fossil record is like a prehistoric jigsaw puzzle, and every new piece makes it wilder. Beyond Huangdong, we've got Homo luzonensis in the Philippines, with their tiny hobbit-like bodies, and Homo longi in northern China, possibly a Denisovan with eerie similarities to Homo erectus. Then there's Homo gilus in central China, another oddball with a unique blend of traits. All these hominins lived between 300,000 and 150,000 years ago, painting a picture of Asia as a laboratory of evolution, where different groups experimented, adapted, and sometimes merged. The Denisovan connection is particularly juicy. We know Denisovans interbred with modern humans, leaving genetic traces in modern populations from Papua New Guinea to Australia. If Denisovans were an offshoot of Homo erectus, as some suspect, then Homo erectus's legacy might already be hiding in our genomes, mislabeled as Denisovan. The Huangdong fossils could be a bridge between these groups, showing a spectrum of traits from archaic to modern. This complexity blows my mind. Growing up, I learned humans evolved in a straight line, Homo erectus, then Neanderthals, then us. But Asia's fossils tell a different story, a braided stream where lineages crisscrossed, blended, and diverged. It's like discovering your family tree as branches you never knew existed. This makes me think about how we define human. If Homo erectus contributed to our gene pool, are they as much our ancestors as Homo sapiens? It's a humbling reminder that our story is messier and richer than we thought. Let's rewind to the Peking Man site where Homo erectus lived between 400,000 and 750,000 years ago. These weren't just brutish cave dwellers. They crafted spears by attaching stone points to wooden shafts, softened animal hides for clothing, and even drilled holes into objects for reasons we can't quite crack. No art or ornaments yet, but this level of craftsmanship shows a mind capable of planning, creativity, and maybe even culture. Imagine a Homo erectus hunter clad in carefully prepared hides, wielding a spear under a starry prehistoric sky. They were thriving in a harsh world, and their skills might have been passed on through interbreeding. This makes Homo erectus feel less like a distant ancestor and more like a neighbor. Their tools and clothes suggest a life not so different from early modern humans, full of purpose, ingenuity, and adaptation. I wonder what it was like to live in their world, where every day was a battle against predators, weather, and scarcity. Their survival for nearly two million years is a testament to their grit, and it's thrilling to think some of that grit might live on in us. To bring this home, let's look at modern parallels. Consider the indigenous peoples of Australia, whose DNA carries traces of Denisovan ancestry, possibly a link to Homo erectus. Their oral traditions, some of the oldest in the world, speak of deep connections to the land, stretching back tens of thousands of years. Imagine an elder telling stories of ancient encounters, not knowing they might echo real meetings between Homo erectus and early humans. Or think of modern artisans in rural China, still using stone tools to craft leather, much like Peking Man did. These connections make the past feel alive, reminding us that the legacy of our ancestors shapes our present in ways we're only beginning to uncover. These stories hit me hard. They show how the past isn't just bones in the ground. It's woven into our cultures, our genes, our lives. When I think about Homo erectus's tools or the Huangdong hybrids, I see a thread connecting us across millennia. It's like finding a long lost relative who left you an inheritance you never knew you had. The catch? We're missing a lot of the puzzle. Asia's vast landscapes, India, Southeast Asia, have barely been explored for ancient human fossils. Without DNA from Homo erectus, 
we rely on the shapes of bones and teeth, but new techniques like paleoproteomics might change that. By studying ancient proteins, scientists could soon confirm whether Homo erectus's genetic fingerprints linger in us. Until then, every new dig, every new fossil, adds to a story that's growing more intricate by the day. I'm excited for what's next. Each discovery is like opening a new chapter in a book we thought we'd finished. It's a reminder that science isn't about having all the answers. It's about chasing the questions. What else will we find in Asia's uncharted caves? How much more of Homo erectus's story is waiting to be told? Picture a misty dawn in southern China 300,000 years ago. The Huangdong River glints under the rising sun, its banks fringed with towering ferns and gnarled trees. A group of Homo erectus, their silhouettes broad and sturdy, moves cautiously through the underbrush, clutching sharpened stone-tipped spears. Their eyes, sharp from millennia of survival, scan the horizon. Across the river, another group emerges from the fog, Taller, slimmer figures with faces eerily similar to ours, early relatives of Homo sapiens. They carry woven baskets, perhaps filled with roots or fish, their tools gleaming with a precision that hints at new ideas. The air is thick with tension, but also curiosity. This is no ordinary day. It's a moment that could change the course of human history. The Homo erectus group pauses, their leader gesturing with a calloused hand. They've seen strangers before, other hominins, perhaps Denisovans or another archaic tribe, but these newcomers are different. Their movements are deliberate, their eyes bright with a spark of something new. The sapiens-like group hesitates too, their hands tightening on their tools. Then, a bold act breaks the silence. One of the sapiens-like hominins steps forward, holding out a polished stone blade, its edge catching the sunlight. The Homo erectus group stirs, but instead of conflict, a cautious exchange begins. A hide, softened and scraped with the skill of peaking man's descendants, is offered in return. Words may be absent, but gestures speak volumes. Trade, trust, maybe even a shared meal by the riverbank. What makes this scene so compelling? It's not just the exchange of goods. It's the possibility of deeper connection. The Huangdong fossils, with their blend of archaic and modern traits, hint that moments like this weren't just fleeting. Maybe these groups camp together for a season, sharing techniques for crafting spears or softening hides. Perhaps, over time, some found mates among the others, their children inheriting the robust jaws of Homo erectus and the refined features of their sapiens-like kin. The teeth and skulls we find today, with their puzzling mix of traits, could be the legacy of these riverside encounters, etched into bone and passed down through generations. This imagined meeting gets me thinking about what makes us human. It's not just our tools or our brains. It's our ability to connect, to bridge divides, to learn from those who seem different. These hominins, separated by millennia of evolution, found a way to meet as equals, to share and create something new. I can't help but see parallels to our world today, where differences often divide us. What if we took a page from our prehistoric ancestors and sought out moments of exchange, of understanding. The Huangdong fossils remind us that our strength lies in our shared story, one built on countless encounters like this one by the river. The Huangdong fossils, with their mix of ancient and modern, tell us something profound. We are not the product of a single lineage, but a tapestry woven from many threads. Homo erectus, once thought a dead end, may have been a vital part of that weave, their traits blending into ours through ancient encounters. This isn't just a story of bones, it's a lesson about connection. Our ancestors, from Homo erectus to early modern humans, survived by meeting, mixing, and learning from each other. Today, in a world often divided, that legacy reminds us to embrace our shared humanity, to see the strength in our differences, and to keep exploring the past that made us who we are. Thank you for joining me on this journey through prehistory. If this blew your mind as much as it did mine, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment about what you think our ancestors were really like. 
See you in the next adventure.